Welcome in to the latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Braddon. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And flying solo for an important reason here. Wanted to give a special birthday shout out to our favorite Tennessee homer, Cousin Shane. Give him some love there on the social medias. His birthday is, uh, you guys are actually getting this a, a day late. I should have mentioned it on the last show. It is Tuesday is uh, his official birthday. So he's celebrating, giving him the day off. Give him uh, some birthday love at Big Orange Vols with a Z on the Twitter machine. I know he sure would appreciate it. And like I said, hey, he's off. So we're going to march to SEC Media Days continues. We're going to preview the Ole Miss Rebels, one of the biggest wild cards in the SEC, in the country, really, this season. But before we get to that, more exciting news. The SEC has finally announced the players that will be going to SEC Media Days. We'll be on location, hopefully grabbing interviews with as many of these players as possible. But, uh, hey, some great news here because we weren't even sure. Some years they take two players. Some years they take three. We're back to three. Uh, They went to two for a little while. Back to three players for each team. So that's fantastic news. And I'm just going to go in order, alphabetical order here. This is how the SEC gave us the list. I'm going to read off every player per team. Alabama, what a trio they're sending. Bryce Young, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. Will Anderson, who many regard as the best defensive player in the country. And Jordan Battle, the outstanding safety that, like I said, that's a hell of a trio Alabama sending down there. But Arkansas, you're right there with them. K.J. Jefferson, love to see him getting his due. Jalen Catalan, who I think is the best safety in the conference. And Bumper Pool, the tackling machine, going to be down there with Sam Pittman representing the Arkansas Razorbacks. Auburn making some good choices here. Tank Bigsby running back. Derek Hall, one of the most underrated defensive players in the SEC. And John Samuel Shanker, the tight end who, I believe last season, he shattered all the Auburn tight end records for catches and receiving yards, maybe even receiving touchdowns. So a hell of a trio for the Auburn Tigers. Florida sending Anthony Richardson. Oh, the hype train is going to continue down there in Atlanta. Ventrell Miller, the linebacker who missed a lot of last season, and that defense really felt his loss. And then offensive lineman Richard Garage is going to be down there representing Billy Napier's Florida Gators, year one of the Billy Napier era, set to start here in a couple weeks. Georgia sending my man, who everybody thinks I hate now, Stetson Bennett. (laughs) Hopefully no one asks him about my stupid list down there. Stetson Bennett, national champion, quarterback, going to be in Atlanta. Nolan Smith, leader on the defensive side of the ball, one of the best linebackers in the conference. And then offensive lineman Cedric Van Pran, also going to be representing the reigning national champions down there with Kirby Smart. Kentucky, I love this crew. Will Levis, of course, the outstanding quarterback. Kenneth Horsey, the offensive lineman. And DeAndre Square, part of uh, Kentucky's outstanding linebacker group, going to be representing the Wildcats with Mark Stoops down in Atlanta. LSU, interesting mix. Didn't know who in the heck they were going to send. Jack Betch, the receiver, the sophomore receiver. Mike Jones, the linebacker. And B.J. Ojalari down there, one of the most uh, fearsome pass rushers in the SEC. Ole Miss, going line of scrimmage heavy here. Nick Broker, the offensive lineman. Cedric Johnson, defensive end, leading sack artist, tackle for loss. Artist coming back. Preview him in a minute. And Jonathan Mingo, the only receiver coming back for Ole Miss, although they hit that transfer. No transfer players. That's pretty interesting, but we'll get to more Rebel talk in a minute. Mississippi State sending Jaden Crumby, defensive tackle, Nathaniel Watson, linebacker, and Austin Williams, the receiver. Will Rogers' go-to option there on third down. And, you know, Mike Leach, is going. To, he's, if he ain't going to send a quarterback, he's going to send a receiver. So there's your trio from Mississippi State. Missouri, Barrett Bannister, the receiver. Martez Manuel, the defensive back. And Isaiah McGuire, the defensive lineman, headed to Atlanta with Eli Drinkowitz. Now here's an interesting one. Caught many people's attention. South Carolina sending Javon Gwynn, the offensive lineman. To carry on Joyner, he's been representing the Gamecocks 
very well the last couple of years. He'll be down in Atlanta. And Zach Pickens, the defensive lineman. But why that, you know, I don't want to take away from, from Gwynn to carry on or Zach, but it's like, where's Spencer Rattler at? So, hey, maybe uh, this is Shane Beamer's way of pumping the brakes a little bit. Maybe just uh, <laughs> going into the season without a little extra media for Spencer Rattler. I don't know. I don't know what the decision could be there, but interesting nonetheless. Tennessee sending Hendon Hooker, of course, the outstanding quarterback. Cedric Tillman, one of the best receivers in the country. And Trayvon Flowers, defensive back. So a good trio from the Vols. A&M picked Damani Richardson, defensive back. Layden Robinson, offensive lineman. And this guy's going to be a quote machine down there. Anaya Smith, receiver slash running back for the Aggies. He's one. We're going to want to have to get a mic in, a microphone in front of down there in Atlanta because uh, Anaya Smith is likely to give us some gold. And then last but not least, Vanderbilt, Ben Bresnathan, the tight end, Anthony Orgy, the linebacker, and Mike Wright, the quarterback. Oh, Ken Seals. Shane texted me as soon as he saw this. He's so much for that Ken Seals quarterback pick. <laughs> hey, Mike Wright's a hell of a player too, I hope. I hope he's a breakout candidate here in the SEC. He sure as hell is dynamic with the ball in his hand. So that's going to be our trio for Vanderbilt. Cannot wait. Again, SEC media days all next week, Monday through Thursday. And then, of course, we'll be hitting you guys up with the pod on Friday as well. So look forward to all that content. But as promised, hey, we're going to preview fall camp for the Ole Miss Rebels who are coming off a Sugar Bowl appearance, of course, 10-3 and three last season, 10-2 and two in the regular season. Could have been a lot more competitive in that Sugar Bowl loss to Baylor had Matt Corral not suffered an injury early in that game, and Luke Altmaier just wasn't ready for that moment. But, hey, it is what it is. Now we turn the page to 2022, and turning the page is going to be the moral of the story here with the Ole Miss Rebels. Listen to these coaches departed. Offensive coordinator, Jeff Levy. De- defensive coordinator, DJ Durkin. Coleman Hutzler, special teams coordinator. Kevin Smith, running backs coach. And Terrell Buckley, corners coach. Some big time assistants leaving Oxford. And it's not, you know, losing guys is one thing. Sometimes you have turnover because your coaches weren't any good. Jeff Levy is now at Oklahoma. DJ Durkin, A&M. Coleman Hutzler, Texas. Kevin Smith, Miami, and Terrell Buckley is apparently going to be a head coach in the XFL, as crazy as that sounds. But, hey, all those guys got promoted. So with success comes – this is what happens. This is what happens at Alabama damn near every year. They lose half their coaching staff. Georgia's starting to suffer that as well because they're having so much success. So how will Lane Kiffin adjust? Added, uh, of course, a number of new coaches, a lot of very young coaches there in Oxford. Charlie Weiss, Jr., it's going to be our new offensive coordinator. He apparently has got a uh, photographic memory. That's got to help when it comes to uh, play calling and everything like that. He's served on staff at uh, FAU under Lane Kiffin. He was at Alabama previously under Nick Saban. And again, I believe with Lane Kiffin. So there's a history there. Jeff Lebby is, is a huge loss, but it'll be interesting to see what Charlie Weiss brings to this program. Maurice Crum. He's been hired as the, to be a co-defensive coordinator along with uh, Chris Partridge, who is already on staff. So that's what we're working with on the defense coordinator. Special teams coordinator, Marty Biaghi from Purdue. And only thing I know about this guy, nine kicks blocked during his three-year run at North Texas special teams coordinator. So Ole Miss, you can expect some blocked kicks coming your way. Uh, Houston's former running back coach, Markel Blackwell's our new running backs coach. And a name Arkansas fans know well, Sam Carter. He's our new corners coach in Oxford. So, again, just massive, massive turnover on the coaching front. But that ain't even close to what we're experiencing on the field. So, let's kick it over to uh, the returning production for the Ole Miss Rebels. 10% passing production returning with Luke Altmaier, had 192 yards last year. And if you think 10% passing is bad, 4%, 4%, not 40, 4% of our rushing yards are back with Kentrell Bullock, 78 yards, leading returning rusher there in Oxford. 23% of our receiving yards with Jonathan Mingos, 346, leading the way. But 
silver lining here, offensive starts, 72% return for the Ole Miss Rebels. And again, when you're looking at this at, at these numbers, you got to be saying to yourself, this is a total rebuild. There's no way in hell Ole Miss can rebound and, and continue to put up these numbers on the offensive side of the ball with all this turnover. You got to hold pump the brakes on that talk because they have absolutely loaded up via the transfer portal. They call Lane Kiffin the portal king for a reason. We'll get to their portal players here in just a second. But, you know, this it's all an experiment is all it really is because we've never had this portal. We've never had this you can transfer it and play immediately. So Lane Kiffin, I think, is wisely looking around the landscape and saying Alabama, Georgia, LSU, A&M, on and on and on. These teams we got to play every year, not to mention Texas coming out and recruiting and, and on and on and on. We can try to compete with them in high school recruiting, which, of course, they have to do, and, and they win their bat, their fair share of battles. Or we can raid the transfer portal, and we can get guys that are looking for one to two years of success and then jump into the NFL. It's almost like they're choosing the NFL model, per se, with free agents. And I know Lane Kiffin's got a brief history in the NFL, so I'm sure they're, that's part of their message. They have a guy, I believe his name's Matt Lindsay, that they, they got from the Philadelphia Eagles to be a GM. So they have an NFL infrastructure in place. And I would imagine that's a big-time pitch when they host these transfers and when they're recruiting them. And something Lane Kiffin has been adamant about, we are not going to add players that were touted that – weren't seeing the field wherever they were at. That's not what we want in Oxford. We want guys that were highly productive on the field and looking to go somewhere even bigger, even better, and make the most of this opportunity before going to the NFL like they did last season with many defensive players and many offensive players that they raised their stock significantly playing for Lane Kiffin's program. So that's the model, and anyone that tells you – that they know how it's going to work out, whether this is horrible, whether this is genius. We just don't know because this has never been tried before, and I cannot wait to see how it plays out. But the good news, we'll get to the schedule. It lines up incredibly well for Ole Miss to come firing out the gate with, uh, you know, they may have it may take a couple weeks to, for them to gel, but they'll have that opportunity with the schedule in front of them. So going back to uh, returning production, 45% of the tackles returned for Ole Miss. Otis Reese had 91. He was your leading returning tackler. Tackles for loss, Cedric Johnson had eight. Sacks, 38% returned with Cedric Johnson. Again, leading the way there with six. And interceptions, 73% returned there with uh, A.J. Finley leading the way with three picks for the Ole Miss Rebels last season. So the defense, you know, not nearly as uh, inexperienced as the offense is in Oxford this offseason. They may have to lean on the defense a little bit until this offense begins to fire on all cylinders, which it could take a little while there in Oxford. Now, players lost to the transfer portal. There were a number of players that jumped out of the uh, program, but not a lot of impact ones, if we got to be honest. The biggest one, probably Kedjuan Smith, defensive back, off to Kentucky. He looks to play early for the Kentucky Wildcats. Henry Parrish, the running back, you lose him to Miami, following running backs coach Kevin Smith down there. That makes a little bit of sense. John Rice Plumley, the receiver slash quarterback, off to, to give it a go for Gus Malzahn down there as a quarterback. Ladarius Cox, you hate to lose him on the defensive line. He's at Indiana now. And then really the only other one is linebacker Momo Sanango, who's now at Louisville. Yeah, you'd love to have those players in, but just look at this incoming class of transfers we've got. Jackson Dart, been pumping this guy up for a couple weeks now from Southern Cal. 62% completion percentage last year, 1,353 passing yards, nine touchdowns, five interceptions. Michael Trigg, breakout star, potentially the biggest one in the SEC, only had seven catches, 109 yards, and a touchdown. But I think he only played in two or three games for Southern Cal last season, scored three touchdowns in the spring game. He is just going to be unguardable uh, in this offense, I really do believe. And then we got the combos of running back Zach Evans and Yasilis Bennett, who they have rushed 
for over 3,000 combined yards in their college career, 27 touchdowns. Those two have combined to score in the college level. Jalen Robinson, a big name to know, 76 catches, 1,329 receiving yards, eight touchdowns in just 18 career games for Central Florida. He is going to be one of the biggest weapons in Lane Kiffin's offense this fall. Jordan Watkins is another one named to know. Louisville's top receiver, 43 catches, 588 yards, four touchdowns in 19 career games up there. Malik Heath, we rated Mississippi State. You got to love that, Ole Miss fans. 71 career catches, 749 yards, eight touchdowns in 20 games. Jalen Knox, formerly of Missouri, 77 career catches, 1,031 yards, four touchdowns in his college career. And Mason Brooks, Western Kentucky offensive lineman. He was a uh, – whatever league they were in, he was all-conference at Western Kentucky. So getting help on the offensive line as well. And I heard something interesting recently – I like to share nuggets I pick up with you guys, but it's kind of funny. You've heard Lane Kiffin kind of complain about, uh, you know, the NIL and how that's being used in recruiting and that's illegal and all that. Well, as I understand it, that's what Ole Miss is doing with the transfer portal, and namely with Jackson Dart is getting paid top dollar. And, and why I even bring that up, not so much to troll Lane Kiffin, who loves to troll himself, but – it's going to be interesting to see because I'm not sitting here saying that, uh, you know, there's going to be pressure on Lane Kiffin to start Jackson Dart because of the NIL opportunities that Dart's getting at Ole Miss. I don't think Lane – I think Lane Kiffin is a uh, established enough coach to where no one's going to tell him what the hell to do with his program. So I'm not suggesting that at all, but it's just going to be fascinating to see. If, if Luke Altmyer outplays Jackson Dart, which quarterback – Lane Kiffin rolls out there to start the season with. And, again, we're in uncharted territories here. So that is just something to continue to monitor. Uh, the fact that they're investing, is, I guess is the right word, so much so heavily in Jackson Dart lets you know that uh, this is someone that Lane Kiffin has got to have a ton of confidence in, believes could be a star, and I've – I've had people from Southern Cal tell me, I mean, this is basically Matt Corral 2.0 here. And he certainly looks the part in his brief career down there at Southern Cal. So it should be fascinating to see how it all shakes out. We'll have to see how quickly, though, with all these moving parts, new running backs, you, you can acclimate them to an offense pretty quickly. But new receivers, a new offensive lineman that's never played at this level, and particularly new quarterback in a much more difficult league. How does this all play out for the Ole Miss Rebels? Cannot wait. And they didn't stop there. On defensive side of the ball. I love J.J. Pegues from Auburn. Of course, uh, I hated him at tight end. I thought it was stupid. A 300-pound tight end out there that's uh, jumping over people. Incredible athleticism. I knew if, you know, his future, if, he, if he's going to play in the NFL, is going to be on the defensive line. That's what he did last year at Auburn. Started to emerge. Now, I think he could be one of the best linemen there in Oxford, Oxford native as well. They added Jared, Jared Ivey from Georgia Tech, 40 career tackles, sack and a half, seven tackles for loss in 17 career games. Kari Coleman from TCU, another defensive lineman, 52 tackles, 17 and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks in 18 career games. Defensive back Ladarius Tennyson from Auburn comes with uh, 43 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss in his career. Deshaun Jerkins from Vanderbilt, 144 tackles, three picks, two forced fumbles, three fumbled recoveries during his 30 games with the Commodores. And then these are the two you really got to know if you don't know now. Linebacker Troy Brown from Central Michigan, 212 career tackles, 32 and a half tackles for loss, six and a half sacks, five picks in his 38 games for Central Michigan. A lot of SEC teams we're all over this Troy Brown. Ole Miss beat him out. And then Ashim Young, the defensive back safety, 109 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, three picks, five forced fumbles in 24 games. I believe he was Big 12 freshman of the year, something like that, at Iowa State in 2020. So he has got massive pro potential, Ashim Young. So we have added some elite, elite defenders as well as offensive players via the transfer portal 
this offseason in Oxford. And, hell, they even added kicker, Jonathan Cruz from Charlotte, because uh, our current kicker, Caden Costa, is suspended. He's appealing it for – he got tagged for PEDs, apparently. I don't know the backstory, but he may not be available till late in the season. Jonathan Cruz, 41 of 57 field goals in his career, 126 of 129 on PAT. So a reliable backup option if we need it. We got via the transfer portal here from Jonathan Cruz from Charlotte. But that's not to completely overlook what Ole Miss does in recruiting. You know, they just save a lot of room for these transfers. But they did have a number of four-star prospects, coveted prospects, that they signed in the latest recruiting class, including Davison, Igbenonson, the number 21 corner. Could see him on the field very early in Oxford. The number 20 defensive lineman, Xavion Harris. The number 19 edge defender, Jerrion Willis. The number 22 safety, Taylor Groves. The number 47 receiver, Jeremiah Dillon. And number 40 corner, Nick Cole. So they added some four-star prospects here to the roster this offseason. Unclear how many of these guys are going to factor in early, but thanks to the additions in the transfer portal, may not need these guys for anything other than special teams and some quality depth on the defensive side of the ball this fall in Oxford. Now, rating the offensive units, it's tricky because, we, again, we don't know what we're getting from a lot of these position groups thanks to all the transfers and, and new faces and new coaching staffs. But I'm going to go receivers for Ole Miss. Jonathan Mingo, again, is back, leading returning receiver. Dennis Jackson, he had a big touchdown against Tennessee. He was a four-star prospect, if I'm not mistaken. Braylon Brown, another touted prospect coming out of high school. Jordan Watkins, again, the transfer from Louisville. Jalen Robinson, the transfer from UCF. Jalen Knox, the transfer from Missouri. Malik Heath, the transfer from Mississippi State. And Jaden Jackson. So massive potential here. And Lane Kiffin knows how to get the most out of this position. He sent several players off to the next level that uh, probably had no business playing in the NFL until they played for Lane Kiffin. So wanted to make that note. Running backs, next on my list, Zach Evans, Ucelis Bennett. Just, I think, a dynamic duo here that uh, is really going to lead the way here for Ole Miss and have, once again, Lane Kiffin and his system, they get credited for being quarterback gurus and, and this high-flying offense, which they deserve. But it's the running game that leads the SEC that's been so dynamic there in Oxford. Evans and Bentley are going to lead the way again. And they got Kentrell Bullock, Keyshawn Jenkins to back them up. So a pretty good running back crew. Put tight ends next because I love Michael Trigg. And then we got Casey Kelly, who is uh, Chad Kelly's younger brother there to serve as our other tight end. And then quarterbacks, Jackson Dart, Luke Altmyer. Again, we don't know who it's going to be. Maybe if I knew, I'd put this group a little bit higher. And then last but not least, the offensive line, which does return four or five players with starting experience. Nick Broker, Jeremy James, Mason Brooks, the West... Western Kentucky transfer, Caleb Warren, Eli Aker, Ben Brown, Cedric Milton. I mean, we got a, a quality front line here in Oxford that should soothe the way for so many new pieces next fall in Oxford. Now, defense, I got to go defensive backs with after landing the two key transfers there that we added. Otis Reese, maybe one of the best players there in Oxford. A.J. Finley could say the same thing with him. Again, teaming him with Ashim Young, the Iowa State transfer, Ladarius Tennyson, the Auburn transfer, Denature Prince, Miles Battle, Kendrick Breedlove, Tyseem Johnson, Trey Washington, a very, very talented and deep group that Lane Kiffin's defense can rely on on the back end. On the defensive line, Cedric Johnson, name to watch. I know last year it was all about – last year it was all about Sam Williams, the – one man wrecking crew. This year it's going to be Cedric Johnson. Name to know if you don't know already. Jared Ivey, the Georgia Tech transfer. Travis Robinson. Katie Hill was a four star prospect coming out. Taiwan Malone was an elite prospect coming out. JJ Pegues, the Auburn transfer. And Isaiah Eaton. Massive, massive potential in this defensive line there in Oxford. Linebackers Troy Brown, the Central Michigan transfer. Asante C. Trunk, who made the big plays there against Texas AM that uh, were huge in that win. Kerry Coleman, the TCU transfer, Austin Keys, 
adds some quality depth there. Again, uh, Ole Miss is going to run that 4-2-6 defense, so they only put two linebackers on the field at one time. So we don't have a deep group there, but we don't necessarily need it. And then again, Jonathan Cruz, the transfer, is going to solidify us at kicker if Caden Costa cannot play the first 10 weeks of the season. And then punter, they got an Aussie, Frazier Mason, I can't remember the last Australian punter that wasn't awesome. So <laughs> I got confidence in uh, Ole Miss punting game right there, no doubt. But uh, let's break down the schedule because this is the best part anyway. And like I said, coming right out the gate, so many winnable games here for Ole Miss. Troy at home. Give me a break. Central Arkansas. I don't even know that. I didn't even know that was a team. 2-0. <laughs> Toughest non-conference game, if you can even call it tough, at Georgia Tech. Well, I mean, that coach is about to be fired. He's, he's been so bad there. So, 3-0. and Tulsa comes to town. Yeah, they're scrappy. 4-0. and That I mean, <laughs> I'm not spending a ton of time on these teams because, come on, this is a joke. 4-0. and You got no excuse for not being 4-0 and right out the gate if you're Ole Miss. Top 25 with a massive, massive game coming up here. Kentucky comes to Oxford. Crucial game here. First SEC game of the year. You know, you could make the case this is a toss-up game. But the home field advantage should factor. Lane Kiffin's crew. Of course, uh, Kentucky came down here before as a hype team. And Ole Miss beat them two years ago during the COVID year. So, no reason to suspect Ole Miss can't get it done again at home. I'm going to go 5-0 and Ole Miss. But again, that, that's a tricky one. At Vanderbilt, up next, give me a break. I mean, that's a pick-your-score type game right now between Ole Miss and Vanderbilt. Clark Lee and Lane Kiffin, give me a break. 6-0 and here. Auburn comes to town. Auburn, tricky team. They got you last year. Will Brian Harson even be the coach at this time? This is a great series, no doubt. But I'm picking Auburn 7th in the West for a reason. I think they're going to struggle this year. So now we're at 7-0. and at LSU, now this is the last five games, critical stretch of the season for the Ole Miss Rebels, but hell, you could easily talk me into Ole Miss with the confidence they've got, how they're rolling right now. I'll give them a win in Tiger Stadium. At Texas A&M, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> but hell, I think Ole Miss fans, if I tell you you're sitting here at 7-1, and one, Heading into the bye week, I think you take it. And there's no reason you can't beat Texas A&M. Hell, you beat them last year, and everybody was kissing their ass in the preseason. And, hell, go back and watch that game. I mean, the defense dominant in that first half. Zach Calzada made some mistakes there in the second half to to kind of seal it for Ole Miss. But, hell, you're, let's credit your defense. Your defense stepping up, making plays when it had to. I just think going into College Station, that may be a too tall of a task. You get Alabama at home. And we all know the fireworks between Lane Kiffin and Nick Saban. So two years ago, you damn near knocked off what was the mightiest team in the country, 2020. Alabama just basically ran through the schedule. They were only tested twice. Once was here in Oxford. The other was the SEC championship game against Florida. No reason you can't give Alabama another tight ball game this fall. I do got to pick Alabama to win that game, though. Then at Arkansas, man, this has turned into one hell of a rivalry, back and forth type ball game. It's on the road in Fayetteville. I got to give this one to Arkansas, if I'm being honest. But I'll make it up to you, Ole Miss fans, hosting Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl. You've whooped them two years in a row that Mike Leach has been there and Lane Kiff has been your your guy. So why not go 3-0 and Ole Miss over Mississippi State, and that would give you a 9-3 and record optimistically. There's no reason you can't win 10 games if something were to break right. You're able to pull an upset. But I think most Ole Miss fans, given what they lost via players to the NFL and coaches getting – your coaching staff getting rated, if you were going to bounce back from a Sugar Bowl season and win nine games, you establish yourself as one of the most consistent programs in the entire country because the SEC, no one goes through that damn league and that damn division and wins 10 games, 19 games in two years. Give me a break. Lane Kiffin and company will be rolling with nine games. 
It's not the standard. I get it. But it's a little bit tough for me to, to go above nine with all the transition this offseason. And a lot's going to have to go right for you to get there. But thankfully, the schedule lines up perfectly for one hell of a start to the season. All right, so hey, that's going to do it for this episode of the show. I do appreciate each and every one of you for suffering through these solo pods with me. But hey, the countdown to SEC Media Days right around the corner. Cannot wait. Want to keep pumping out these daily team previews as I can. So we just give you something to listen to. Give you something to listen to as we all await SEC Media Days. And we got another in-person pod with Shane that's going to come out in the coming days. I'm kind of keeping that one in my back pocket, but it's even better. Shane got even drunker <laughs> than the quarterback rankings one. So be on the lookout for that too in the coming days. But that is going to do it for this episode of the show. But thanks again, each and every one of you for, for checking us out. We'll catch you on the next one.